Genesis First Premier, the Honorable Dr. Simeon Daniel, passed away on Sunday, May 27, 2012, at his home at Bridges Estates in Johns. His wife, Sheila, children, and close family members were at his bedside when he slipped away quietly. Divisions at home and in the diaspora were plunged into mourning as news spread of his passing, but have been heartened by the quality and impact of the man hailed as the father of modern day Nevis. Dr. Daniel left his footprints, his DNA, all over his beloved Nevis. In this special feature, we will share fond memories of the life and times of a true Nevisian patriot, Dr. Simeon Daniel. Simeon Daniel was born on August 22nd, 1934. He was one of six children, born to Joseph Job Daniel and Melvina Daniel Nee Archer. The foundation of his home in the rural village of Banscott, five miles north of Charlestown, where his family house stood across from the Hamiltons is testimony of his humble beginnings. Young Simeon received his early education at the Lowlands Elementary School and entered the teaching profession as a pupil teacher. He was also a member of the St. Thomas's Anglican Church and served as an altar boy under Father Thomas, who was the resident parish priest from England who helped to nurture and guide him. Though young Simeon Daniel's initial ambition was to become a priest, when he journeyed to England to pursue his dream, he decided to study law. Having qualified as a lawyer, he returned to St. Kitts Nevis in 1967 and landed a job with government and called to the bar later that same year. 1967 was a year of much crisis in St. Kitts, Nevis, Anguilla, and Daniel remained busy promoting his career as he served as additional magistrate for the Nevis district. Daniel drew his strength from his love for his country, Nevis, and always demonstrated it. We visited Barnes Gut where we spoke with childhood neighbor and friend Wilfred Hamilton and Eglantine Jubri, who knew Daniel as a young boy in the village, remembering him as humble yet powerful man. It was a good time. He, his mother died leaving small you know, and Neville and me had to look after him and so on. When the, the, the father gone out to work, they stay with me and everything, and I take care of them until when they come and so on, but Mr. Daniel, he was a very good man. He loved everybody in Barnsgut, I and mean, Barnsgut people did love him because he was nice to us. He don't give us up. Even when he first come premier, he come to the village and he look after everybody in the village. And then he see the road bad, but you know, no money was there. No money was there, but he tried best and give us two streets that we could walk from Barnsgut to go to church because sometimes we have to go to church, we walk with two pairs of shoes, one in our hand and one over our shoulder. And then he give us two strips, but thank God that he give us the two strips. He better than nothing at all. And then afterwards we get to walk, we go to church. So he's a very good and humble man. Up to, since he lose, he was very, very good. Well, when you children me, we play together, yeah. At night we we we, we play our we call our hoop and 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 games and so. And then at school we, we play ball together and so on too. Yeah, but he all of me really. Yeah, he all of me. Yeah. Yeah, the boy well, uh, they used to bake. We open, you know, they open to bake bread and so on. And at the time, I left school in the afternoon. They had to go look at the wood or, or the, in the pasture. And one time, 
ai ca chongro de kota ve vela igo he and his boda tate ko mai wodu ai ana tan chies dem and then look he boda do piece but he he said another thing he no jabi one of the So long after I asked him, how come you didn't jump wood? He said, no, I, I went to look wood. Mm -hmm. And he got wood so he can't jump that. <laughs> yes, yeah, really so. Okay. Otherwise, yeah, we never, you have like that. Well, then the England storm came up and so on, and then uh, everybody just got up. Yeah, because I was in England, and he went to England. So we, we didn't get to go down home. He don't give us up. He always up here. Even sometimes when he not feel good, he takes sick, he still passed to the village and come see what we're doing and so on. But him? I remember him, he's a very good, powerful man. He go to tell you, real good, better than that is spoil. He's real good and nice. And so we thank God for him and we miss him a lot and for God in the midst of everything. The Lord Jesus gave and the Lord Jesus take. Even though he couldn't walk, he just still come in the car and talk to us and so on. And he give us water. And he give us, you know, the Six Farm College, mm -hmm. he fight for it. And we get it, he, he do everything, everything, everything we know on is he. Because he was the first premier and he try our best to make us feel happy and everything. So he give us water, he give us roll. If he roll even so small, we tell thank him, thank him for it. So he do everything to please us. But oh, oh yeah, man, he was a nice, a nice man for this village. He helped him. You could go to him to do anything and, 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 and tell him you, you, you need and so on and everything, and he'll help. He helped you somehow. Yeah, yeah, he was very good. Very good for this village here, yeah. yeah. He was a nice man. Okay, I think we're we, yeah, we, we, we all right. We, I told them, I told them to tell them, okay, I got to tell the boys, I'm going to tell them to I'm going to pay for him here at the, at the grave site. Yeah, so you said I'm good, we're going to tell him I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I press my sympathy to Mr. Daniel, my agonist of St. Thomas's Church, and I wish her all the best, and she must keep up God in the midst of everything. And my sympathy to Mr. Daniel, I feel it very much, but we cannot do nothing but give God thanks and praise because Lord Jesus gave and the Lord take away. Former secretary to the Premier in 1998 to 1992, Ayanson Barrett, says she enjoyed working with the island's first Premier and shared her reaction to his passing. And former permanent secretary to the first Premier of Nevis, Wendell Huggins, also shared his recollections of working with Dr. Daniel and how they will remember him. Mr. Daniel, as you have so rightly described him as a patriot, was one of those patriotic divisions whose vision and commitment to his people and love of his people have changed the lives of so many people in Nevis. When I went to the administration building in February 1988 as his permanent secretary, I found Mr. Daniel, or working with him, somewhat of a challenge. It was my first outing at that level. Um, the administration in Nevis had not long been established. Um, just about seven years. I went there in 1988 and the, and the administration in Nevis was established by the constitution in 1983. Five years, sorry. And uh, so there were still teething pains. Mr. Daniel was a very humble man. He always had time for everybody who come by, who came by to see him. He ha always had a minute to spare, and he always had a love for Nevis. He always speak about Nevis and what he would like to do for Nevis. 
and uh, always had time to speak to everybody. Everybody had a word for him and what he should do, and he always listened to everybody. And he was a very nice boss to work with. Mr. Daniel, I found, or I have always found, to be a man of great vision, great love of his people. He was this kind of avant-garde politician who always had his own ideas, was, was always thinking about things, new things, new ideas, always with his people in mind, whether it had to do with education or tourism or water development or road development or electricity expansion whatever whatever the matter was he was totally and fully committed to his people and that's that is the enduring legacy i have in my mind of mr daniel committed a man with a great deal of vision. Having said that, though, I must also say that I had people working with him who were just as visionary and just as committed as he was. I don't want anyone to make the mistake in thinking that all of what Mr. Daniel achieved, and he did achieve much, I don't need to um, repeat them now, all of what he achieved was not done by himself. He had able people around him, ministers of government, his cabinet, his permanent secretaries, um, you know, the various directors, like for instance, the director of agriculture, the director of planning, all of those people helped to implement Mr. Daniel's policies. So, um, yes, a lot was achieved. Yes, he worked hard. Yes, he had the vision. Yes, he led from in front. And yes, he was always thinking about his people and finding ways of modernizing navies and bringing navies up to the 20th century. His achievement in education was phenomenal. The program organized by the University of Miami to train teachers both at primary level and secondary level was phenomenal. And I often wondered how Mr. Daniel managed that, especially with all the budgetary constraints that he faced. Nonetheless, again, people focused. He wanted to improve the lot of the people. The other program by the dead people, that again, it was for the private sector as well as government. Private sector people were involved. I mean, that is, that is unprecedented. Uh, the sixth form, that, that was unprecedented as well. Um, Mr. Daniel was aware of the difficulties and problems that students from Nevis endured while they, while they attended the Bastia High School, six from there, he was well aware. Um, those problems were well known, particularly um, by people who were involved, like the parents and the families of those students who went there, and along with Ivor Stevens, Mr. Perry, and others, he decided as a policy decision he was going to establish this as well. Now, then and now, the New Island administration only had administrative responsibilities for for education, not policy responsibilities. And he decided, well, he was going to start anyway. And it was for about two years or more before the six form students were finally put into a physical environment that was conducive to, to effective learning. And this he did. Initially, the numbers were around 20 and each year the numbers became bigger and bigger till now finally I'm sure the number is more than 100. Um, I had some involvement in that. The story is not known and I, 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 I want to repeat it with, <laughs> I'm having great difficulty in repeating it because it is so personal. 
and I'm not one to blow my own trumpet really. But the idea of the sixth form was quite quite modern and, and quite right. And Mr. Daniel was not a man who did things for personal aggrandizement. He never looked for accolades. He never wanted anyone to sing his praises. That's my recollection of Mr. Daniel. I'm truly grateful for that and happy. I, I have worked with him. I have good memories of him. And I know his legacy is going to live, live on. Yeah, I have to extend my deepest condolences to Mrs. Sheila Daniel and her family and the loss of this patriotic division. Death is so final and sometimes so incomprehensible, but it is inevitable. And I just hope that they have memories of Mr. Daniel that they could embrace if and when the difficult time, difficult times come. I wish them well. He is also known for establishing the Nevis Reformation Party and political colleague and friend Eurel Swanston spoke passionately and emotionally when he sat down for an interview with Stevenson Manners. It was always um, a difficult struggle because um, even though there were elections and uh, the people of Nevis voted for who they want, they were never in a position to determined what was best for the people of Nevis. The Ministry of Nevis Affairs was always handled by a politician in St. Kitts. And we were really seeing that, that representative. Yes. Well, as I said, you know, um, because Mr. Daniel was able to put um, an administration I'm not talking about the Navy Island administration, but an administration within the, ne the Ministry of Navy's Affairs, right? And had, had able-bodied people, able-bodied people, because, I mean, when you think of the, the, the men who were around him, I mean, there were men with, men at the level of experience of running an administration, a government, or whatever it is, but they were coming as businessmen. I mean... Look at me, I start my little business in 1963. But this is 2012, I'm still here, after Evelyn. Mm -hmm. Right? So these men, these people had tremendous business experience of knowing what <laughs> growth is all about. Right? Sometimes in very hard economic times. And uh, had to make it do. And the, therefore, the, the, the burden, the workload on Mr. Daniel was, was made lighter. I remember, as you call the name of, as you call the name of Augustine Merchant, <laughs> I would hate to say what agriculture was before he came. But when we sought to bring him out of the school, right, into the agriculture department, there were all kind of noises. All kind of noises. Oh, you're taking away my best teacher. Agriculture is to go down the drain now. What are we going to do? But our, our action was we had it thinking about the country, not the school. The country is the country we were concerned about. And let me tell you, it was not easy because. Um, there was a permanent secretary in St. Kitts who had earmarked somebody else for that same job and was making it difficult for us to get Mr. Merchant what it is who we want. And as I said, because we know who we want, because we know where we are going and because we know who we are dealing with, we were very determined and we didn't let up. <laughs> no, you say you had a different view in the 80s to the 70s. We're now in 
in 2012, many, many years removed, um, the world order has changed. Are you saying to me that people who play the secessionist card in 2012 are not facing the realities? They're definitely not. And I'm telling you that the secession to which they spoke to in 2012 is not the secession which I spoke to in the 1970s. The secession which they are speaking to now, right, is saying that because Nevis is, a, is in a better position now, good water, with, 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 with adequate water, right, reserves, right, electricity almost every home, right, better roads, better communications, they are feeling that it is time to go. And that is the secession that they are talking about, right? The secession that I spoke to is when you, if you wanted to build a toilet in this country, permission had to come from St. Kitts. That is what I was speaking to. Right? The secession that I was speaking to is that irrespective of however bright you are, right? You cannot be promoted in this country. You have to go to St. Kitts for promotion. The secession that I was speaking to is the many scholars who stayed from school, who probably could have gone on to university. But because the situation was of such that there was only a fifth farm education in the island of Nevis. And if they didn't have families and friends, you understand, who were conversant and with the situation to, uh, to keep them in St. Kitts, to go down to St. Kitts, right? You couldn't get a higher school education. That is the situation that I'm talking to. So and I'm telling you, it does not exist anymore. So totally different time? Totally different time. How much of that credit is due to Dr. Daniel? Every bit of it. Every bit of it is a man with division. And that is the reason why I said to you earlier, in walking, coming here, what would happen if men were allowed to live on? What kind of person would they have been? What kind of country? Because I'm talking about what? A few years of his life? And we have seen a total transformation. A total transformation. I mean, when the Bank of Nevis and Social Bank was opened under St. Daniel, people said he was crazy. Because what? Nevision businessmen were going down to sink it with a little suitcase in the hand Unbelievable. to bank the money. Mm. And no longer was that under. <laughs> I know it's very emotional for you. We're going to end this just now. Um, how should Sim be remembered? I know it's tough, but how should we remember him? We'll probably end it there. You know, it has been very emotionally stressful for you to speak of a man who, at age 77, has gone to the great beyond. Sim remembered. And the vision patriot. The relationship between Mr. Daniel and myself goes back to well over 40 years. And uh, I must indeed say that I am extremely happy to have known this man, um, to have worked with him, because I have found him to be a very hard working, sincere, dedicated, and uh, above all, was extremely willing to be successful in whatever he put up his hand to do. And uh, I believe that it is people who have these kind of qualities, right, which are very real, they're not easy to find. But when you find them, at least um, you try your utmost best and you make the good use of them. Now that he has gone, I think that his life and his time must leave a lesson in the hearts and mind of every nation who is willing to make it 
through thick and thin. At this time, my family and I extend sympathy to his dear wife, Sheila, who is my good friend, and to her sister, Monica. All the best wishes in this dear time of bereavement. And to let them know that he has gone, but he will never be forgotten. Many divisions are indebted to this fallen hero who has contributed so much to the economic landscape and social development of the entire island. Augustine Merchant was a teacher when he was approached by Dr. Daniel to head the agriculture department and assist with the empowerment process of the land reform program, another initiative of Dr. Daniel. It was a Sunday afternoon, I can remember it quite vividly. I went over to Newcastle to play a cricket match. It was Eastern, Eastern is the name of the team from Zion. We were playing against the Newcastle team. And uh, I got back home in the evening. When I got back home, my mother told me that uh, Dr. Daniel came to see me. So I said, did he leave a message? You know, why did he come to see me first? She said, I really don't know, but he came to see you. And I, I was wondering what he could come to Zion to see me for, because after all, I'm a young boy and the premier leaving Barnes got out. I think he might have lived in Bridges at that time, you know, coming to Zion to see me. So I said, okay, I don't know what he has to see me for, what he wanted to see me for, but I wanted to see him because Interestingly, the Saturday before that Sunday, I got admitted to the University of the West Indies. And I don't know how I was going to get to the University of the West Indies. So I said, OK, I'm going to see him because I have something to talk about. And while I'm there, I'll hear what he has to say. You know, one thing which was very strong on Mr. Daniel mine, I could recall him discussing it with me, was the fact that he wanted everybody in Nevis to own a piece of the land everybody. And I remember he telling me, you know, I wanted to organize a meeting for people in the Rollins area because I want to start in the Rollins area. And uh, in the Rollins area, most of those people there, they had land from since 1938. And uh, most of them had three acres of land. A lot of the land were not being used. But and he felt that what he can do is to give those who own, well, not own, but who are working the land one acre, and those people who didn't have any land, give them an opportunity to, to buy half an acre. So we went up to, to Hard Times. The meeting was held in Hard Times, right on the Sandbox Street. And, you know, he indicated to them what his plan was, but there was some vigorous opposition. People decided that the land belonged to them. They had a bit of a piece of a document which indicated the terms and conditions for rental, and they assumed that this was the title to the land. So there was some vigorous op opposition. I could remember some of those people who were at that meeting there have passed on to the Great Beyond. And so we left. Rollins not accomplishing what he set out to do. And I think he was very disappointed. And later on, he said, you know, uh, what do you suggest? And so I told him that I know some him in the land, that's in the Hickman area, who need land, and uh, we could try there. So a second meeting was held at Fort, at Fort Gilles, yeah and uh, he indicated to them what he wanted to do. They agreed, and then he said, well, the price. He asked them the price. Everybody was silent on that. And then somebody behind said, 6,000. He said, and I said, it seems as if I heard a, so, uh, a number there. What, it, what, what, what is it? And uh, the person was so ashamed of what he said that he didn't repeat it. So somebody behind said, 
He said six thousand dollars. <laughs> he said six thousand dollars. So we set the plan and say, okay, six thousand dollars. Okay, six thousand dollars an acre. Six thousand dollars an acre, and for half an acre you paid. It was signed, sealed right there at Fortagel. And before he left, he said, listen to me, all of you wanted to give your name to Mr. Merchant, and uh, the surveyor was Steele Douglas, and uh, he's going to pass on the name to Steele Douglas. You are keeping contact with them, see where the land would be. You, you know, you have a, an option, you could choose your spot. So, and that was the beginning. Now, it, he didn't even stay, he just didn't start at Fortagels, he went all over all over the island. Uh, in, the, in the Butler's area, I could recall Nicholas Busso. That land he, was, he lives on, that land was government land. He, I think initially he got uh, one acre and he got an, a second, a half an acre afterwards. So all those people going across the Eden Brown area there by Nicholas Busso, they got those land. And then you go down to Brooklyn, where the old White House School is people above and below the road they got land under the same arrangement where they just pay 6000 per acre and so on. And up to, I think it would have been about 1985, the Navy Housing Land and Housing Corporation was established somewhere there about. And that took over the sale of the land. Prior to that, it was just the Department of Agriculture you know, doing that role, collecting the name, passing them on to the survey and so on. And then the, the uh, Housing Corporation took on that responsibility. The first area I could recall they did was going up the Rollins Road, uh, past Annette Morton going up there, that first one. I think there they had to put in road, electricity, water and so on. Those then were sold for about 65 cents per, per square foot. And uh, then they continue and almost did the whole of Rollins, moved down to a to, uh, Brown Hill area and so on. So throughout Nevis, people were able to get land. So when I see all the beautiful houses on Nevis, the Honorable Simeon Daniel, it's all part of it. Because the land he gave those people, which they bought for $6,000, those land really were valued almost $100,000 at that time. So by the time they go to the bank, they have significant asset walking with to the bank. So I think that was one of the reasons why, or that was one of the way Nivision were empowered and enriched, if I could use that word also, to move forward. All due to the Honorable Simeon Daniel. The uh, Fisherman Cooperative there, uh, Mr. Luther William was very instrumental with that. But the Honorable Simeon Daniel was very much uh, you know, aware of, of what was happening. As a matter of fact, that project, I think they got over $400,000 to put up that building, building there and to get a lot of input, ropes, wire, and so on. And he was very instrumental with that, with that, with that project. And I could recall having meetings of the Fisherman Cooperative every year. They normally have the annual general meeting. We used to have it up at the, the high school there. And on occasion, he would, he would be there. So he was very much involved in what was, was happening. Yes, that was something which he thought about and which, uh, but uh, anything else, sometimes their time hasn't come. At that time, they, you know, he talked about the mangoes we have, you know, he would like to see a processing plant in, in Nevis. As I said, that didn't come during his, his time, but that was something which he spoke, he spoke about. And, uh, but I really want to, you know, send out my sympathy and condolences to his, his family. Mr. Daniel was not just a person who, okay, you work with him and he's concerned about that. I think I can say I was a personal friend of his. Uh, yeah. I could recall, 
at the afternoon taking my children by Miss Ferguson for music. And music might last an hour, hour 15 minutes or so on. And you know, he lives not too far from there. I'd go up by him, get there. You know, he always much and come take a beer. <laughs> come take a beer, you know, I'll go take a beer with him and sit down and talk and so on and so on and so on. And even in his later years, when he moved to, to uh, Charleston, he had a little house in Charleston there, I would make sure I go and pay my visit and so on. I remember the, the, at some point I went there, he said, yeah, I heard you have a daughter who's a lawyer, but you haven't brought her here. Make sure you bring her here next time. I have a book here for her, I have a book here for her. You know, she need to know the history. So I took my daughter there, he signed the book, gave it to her, and so on, and so on, and so on. And, you know, so it's somebody who I dearly admire. I dearly admire, you know, and as I said, he has made a significant contribution to, to Nevis. Since the announcement of Dr. Simeon Daniel's death, there has been an outpouring of love for the fallen hero, as radio talk shows and calling programs have paid glowing tributes in their programming. Friends and political colleagues and foes alike paid tribute hours after he succumbed to his prolonged illness. In paying tribute to Dr. Daniel, Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas described Nevis's first premier, Dr. Simeon Daniel, as someone who had direct impact on the social, political, and economic evolution of the island. The measure of the greatness of Dr. Simeon Daniel was the way in which he saw beyond his own belief in secession for Nevis. Sim Daniel put his belief on hold in the interest of the unity between our two islands as the way forward for the betterment of the people of Nevis. Our country has lost one of its heroes. His path in the evolution of our national identity was a seminal one which cannot be overstated, the Prime Minister said. Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Joseph Parry, hailed the Nevisian patriot, the father of modern-day Nevis, noting that Dr. Daniel must be given every accolade and every honor due to one that has achieved so much for so many. On behalf of his cabinet, the executive of the Nevis Reformation Party, and the people of Nevis, Premier Parry expressed great sadness at what he called a major loss of an important statesman and political figure. Tributes also were received from the leader of the federal opposition of St. Kitts and Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley, former Prime Minister Dr. Kennedy Simmons, and President of the Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCJ, Sir Dennis Byron, among many others. The official funeral service for the first Premier of Nevis has been announced for Tuesday, 5th June 2012, at the Anglican Church at Lowlands in St. Thomas's Parish. The public will be given a final opportunity to see Dr. Daniel when his body is expected to lay in state at the High Court in Charlestown on the same day, Tuesday, June 5th, from 8 a.m. till 12 noon. Viewing at the St. Thomas's Anglican Church would begin at 1 p.m. and the funeral services will begin at 2.30 p.m. His body will be interred at the St. Thomas's Parish Cemetery. Flags on public buildings will continue to be flown at half staff till Wednesday, June 6, 2012. Dr. Simeon Daniel served in Nevis as first premier from 1983 to 1992. Born August 22, 1934, died May 27, 2012. A true Nevisian patriot. I too would like to add my condolences to the bereaved families. This has been a special tribute remembering Nevis's first premier, the Honorable Dr. Simeon Daniel, a true Nevisian patriot. I am Hazel Francis. Thanks for watching.